Thanks for watching our broadcast. We're so glad that we have the opportunity to come into your home, your iPhone, your tablet, your Android, whatever means you are watching us. We need your help. It is made possible by generosity of others like yourself that allows us to come into your space. So please do us a favor. Text to give something towards this broadcast. It makes a difference so that we can continue to bring this ministry to you. Let's get into the broadcast. John 4. John 4. Listen, if y'all party, I went to two parties last night. It Christian parties. It Christian parties. Me and my wife and I. Man, I woke up this morning. I was like, how do people do it? So my 11.15, I got to apologize to them because those some of them clubbers that come in, I got to hug them after service. Man, you got up and came? God, I love you. John chapter number four. John, there's still that hum. I know, you're, I know it's a grounding piece, but if you could. Uh, John four, verse number one, it says, now Jesus learned that the Pharisees had, uh, verse number four, let's start there. John four, verse four, New, New International Version. Now, Jesus knew he had to go through Samaria. So he came to a town in Samaria called Sakar, near the plot of the ground of Jacob, had given to his sons, Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well. It was about noontime, so it's the hottest time of the day. When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into the town to buy food. So Jesus sends his disciples away intentionally. It's only he and this woman. Now, that's crazy because uh, that's crazy. So it's really, it's really, it's really a, an amazing situation because here's what happens. For a man to be with a woman alone was a big deal. Number two, for a Jew to be with a Samaritan was another big deal. So Jesus is breaking all type of rules. Jesus was a rule breaker because he did not hang out with who everybody thought he should, right? We should have friends that are with God, friends that are away from God, with the intention of bringing them to God. Right? I, I will always hang out with people that I know love God, know God, and then I will always hang out with people that are so far from God because you need both of them. Because you could be so spiritual that you don't realize what other people are really going through and you could bridge the two together. You understand what I'm saying? And as a leader, you need both friends that are of the faith and friends that are not of the faith. So verse number nine. The Samaritan woman said to him, you are a Jew and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink for Jews do not associate with the Samaritan? She already knew he was a Jew because of the complexion of his skin, which then debunks the myth that Jesus was just this white man from Nazareth. Jesus was a darker hue. Pause. Let me say this. Tomorrow at 7 o'clock, I forgot, we have Palm Beach Atlantic coming. Uh, Palm Beach Atlantic is coming tomorrow to our church to talk about slavery and the Bible. I know we have a generation that's super woke and you need to understand this concept of how slavery in scripture is not slavery like we've seen in America. And also, is God a God of genocide? When you look at the Old Testament, you see all these deaths, is God a God of genocide? It's tomorrow at seven. Whether you had planned to be here or not, I need you to make the attempt. Even if you're here and you're like, I don't even know why I'm here. Because let me tell you what's happening. When you have big educational corporations come to your church, they are testing to see if it's worth investing in your community. So I can't lobby them to come and you not be here. So even if you have no merit, no value for it, I need you to be here because we want to be able to say to them, stop making prices so unaffordable to where we get priced out. Y'all ain't talking to me. I don't need you to reshare activism. I need you to be a part of it. And tomorrow's an amazing opportunity because they don't come to our churches at all. And if they're coming, and they see five people, they're like, that's why we shouldn't waste our time with them churches. And so I need you to make all of your effort. If you have any respect for me, any value for what I do, please, for the love of God, 
be here tomorrow at 7 o'clock. Thank you, manager, for making time this morning to set your schedule to be here. Verse number 10. Jesus answered, if you knew the gift of God and who it was that asked for a drink, you would have asked him and would have given him living water. Sir, the woman said, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. When you get living water, are you greater than our father Jacob who gave us this well and drank for himself and did his sons and his livestock? Jesus answered, everyone who drinks water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst again. Indeed, the water I give them will become a spring of water welling up of eternal life. The woman said to the man, sir, give me this water so that I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water. He told her, go call your husband and come back. I have no husband, she replied. Jesus said to her, you are right. When you say you have no husband, the fact is you have had five husbands and the man you have now is not your husband. What you have just said is quite true. So here it is. Verse 24, it says, and they that worship me must worship me in spirit and in truth. I want to give you a little different twist on this particular passage that most of us may have not seen. So we're talking about relation tips and about how to have relationships that are effective. But here's what I want to pause because I was teaching this for three weeks about couples, relationships, and individuals. And then I realized, stop me right in the middle, that God was saying, if their relationship with me is not right, they will use people to feed what only I can feed. And because of sin, we are all cracked. Now, you got to understand this story because it is a beautiful story that gets butchered a lot of times. This woman is walking in the heat of the day. Now, mind you, she's when we're born into sin, we already got a crack. So now let me help you understand what this crack means. Some of you have struggles that you didn't ask for. You just were born with them. Some of you didn't wake up saying, man, I just want to be an alcoholic. I want to be angry. I want my father to leave me. I want to be molested. I want to be right. No, these cracks happen in our lives. And if we don't tend to these cracks, they start to split our, the cracks don't just want to stay where they are. They want to take our entire life. They want to take every bit of our lives. And so when God is trying to put more into our lives because we're so broken, we can't handle it. And what we do as humans, we try to find company because company makes us feel like we're not alone. But if you're alone internally, it doesn't matter how many people you have around you, you will still feel broken and because they're not meeting your needs company will then frustrate you because you're so broken and you're wondering why they don't understand what's wrong with you but you gotta know that broken people can't fix broken people only whole people can give life so that's why when all of us are saying Lord man I want somebody in my life the question is is am I whole enough to receive somebody and maybe you may be married and broken and maybe it's not your partner that's the problem Maybe it's you that's the problem because you want your wife to heal all of your brokenness and only God can do that because there is a spot and there is a place in everybody's life that God reserves the right to feel himself. There's no money that can do it. There's no car that can do it. There's no, have you ever got a car and you start realizing, man, this made me happy the first month and then it still didn't make Make you happy because only God can feel certain areas of your life and I know that sounds cliche and I know that sounds taboo but it is the truth that is why John says very clearly that they that worship me must worship me in spirit and truth because there is an exchange that happens in worship that provides healing for the broken so now here it is John 4 this woman is a half-breed they call them half-breeds because they're Samaritans. They're mixed cup. They're mixed race. They're not full Jews. They're half-bred. So that means a Jew and another culture got together and they made a Samaritan. Now here's where it gets deep. Her entire life, she's been called what? A Samaritan. It's not what she's been called. A Samaritan is a different word that they would use. They would call Samaritan women a menstrual cycle. So her entire life, She's been told, you're just a menstrual cycle. Imagine how low you have to feel that every time you get introduced, they introduce you as a menstrual cycle. They introduce you as a dog. They introduce you as a half-breed because what you need to understand 
is although you may not subscribe to labels, labels do affect us and they do limit us. And if you don't pay attention, the first thing that they do in our school systems when they can't figure you out is they label you. And if I label you long enough, you'll believe anything that I speak over your life. If I label you right long enough, you will adhere to your label. You're just nothing but a thug. You're just nothing but a gangster. You're just nothing but a goon. You're just nothing that will be nothing. You'll end up like your father. And all of a sudden, all these cracks start happening in your life. And now, you end up going to an altar. You fall in love. But in reality, you did not fall in love. You fell in love with a potential healer that can't heal you. And, and, and these cracks continue to spread. But here it is. So she's called these negative names. And because, here's the thing. She has five husbands, and she's living with one that's not her own right now. And, and here's the thing. You know, it's easy to surmise when you read that, that maybe she's whorish. She's sleeping with a bunch of women or men, and she's having these relationships. But maybe there's a possibility that she could have been married five times and her husbands died. You see, we read into the text what we think it says because it makes us feel better to justify her as this. And she may have been, or it could have been. Now, here's the thing that you got to understand. They didn't go out and just choose who they want to marry. They had to be picked on. So their father, the husband's father, had to pick the woman that they want their son to marry. So her husband's could have been dead, and all of a sudden now she's up for auction again, and she's getting picked again. Can you imagine? You know you're not getting picked if you're ugly. Okay, so, so you're going to the well because you have five husbands. So that means if you got five husbands, that means that there's some qualities about you that every father sees that he wants his son to have. And although you got all of these accolades and although you got all these things following you, you still got cracks. You so cracked, you're going out in the middle of the day when no one is around because you don't want to be discovered by anybody. It's one thing not to like people around you, but it's another thing not to like yourself. And this woman is going in the heat of the day. Let's just say it's like 2 p.m. in Florida. And this is where she's walking. She ain't taking an Uber. She's not taking a lift. She's walking with a bucket. And if, I don't know, maybe she's African-American or African in nature. And she's got these buckets on her head or Jamaican or Haitian. She's got these buckets she's putting on her head as she's walking to the well in the middle of the day. And remember, you can't wear Daisy Dukes like we do. Or some of y'all don't know what that is. Onesies that we wear, these little ones, we can't wear those in those days. You got to wear garments that are heavy. You got to wear long garments that cover your body. And so she's sweating and she's perspiring and she ain't got no filters and no makeups. She didn't get her face beat because they didn't have makeup back then. But she's walking in the middle of the day trying to avoid contact with anybody who can discover her brokenness. And, and as she's sitting there talking, She's having a conversation with a man that's sitting on the source of what she thinks she needs. She thinks she needs water. She needs healing. You think you need love. You need a revelation. You think you need companionship. You, and, and it doesn't mean, just because you're married doesn't mean you have companionship. Because some of your spouses know nothing about you. But, but he's, so, he, he's so broken, he, he's, she's so broken that Jesus says, I, I've got to go. Here's the thing. Wants address our feelings, things that you desire. Needs define our being. Jesus said, you want water, but you need me. No, you, you, you want water. You want this, but you don't, you don't, you don't want, you want that. Your feelings want that. But you know how many know your feelings change? 
your feelings change. The way you feel one day, that's why the way, that's why you always have to have updates because who you married today is not who you married seven years later. They don't have the same values, they don't have the same desires, and if they got themselves educated, they certainly ain't the same 23-year-old that you met pre-education. They have grown, they have diversified, and maybe they don't want what they used to want, and you've got to update your file just as you update your anti-security, and so it is. We're broken, but as all humans, we all are broken. I don't care how much money you have. I don't care what side of town you live in, what side of the tracks you come from. I don't care what your educational background is. I don't care if the job promoted you. At the end of the day, you still are a broken vessel, and God simply looks at the woman and looks at her like she's at TKC or he's at TKC and says, you think you need water. You don't need water. You got water, and you still still get thirsty. Every time you drink it, you still want more of it because it's not enough. It's not enough. You can have all the virtual friends. It's not enough. You can have all the stages in the world. It's not enough. You can have all the money in your bank account. It's not enough. God is simply saying, I want you to know that I am everything you will ever need and I will make sure of it that your heart will let you know that I am every. I will make the things that that were familiar to you frustrating so that you can recognize that you're hungry for something greater than your appetite has ever seen and they go and get water and she's thirsty again and she goes back to the same place that once used to make her feel good but doesn't make her feel good anymore because God has a way of drying up our resources that have replaced him. He has a way of making the places that you thought were the safe place unsafe and God is simply saying to her, no, that's not what you need. Because here's the thing. If you have a house, if you have a house, after a while, it begins to settle. And when it settles, it starts to crack. The crack ain't dangerous if you monitor it. Because if it starts cracking too big, it'll start affecting your foundation. Y'all ain't talking to me today. And what happens is we see these little cracks in our lives and we ignore them and we say, well, no, it's not a big deal. It's okay. I'll get through it. I'm just going to grind through it. I'm just going to push through it. Or oh, what we do is we ignore it and we ignore it so long that the crack shows up when we least expect it. And now when we got guests over and we want to give them this glass, the glass breaks in their hand because we didn't tend to the cracks when it really mattered. The cracks have always been there, but we never address them and now we're finally in a stage of our lives where we're finally about to make it and the cracks are now being exposed and he's saying you don't need water you need me and that is why worship and music is so powerful it's so liberating it's so refreshing and you can listen to any type of music and be energized and be reinvigorated but if you listen to love music for a while it feels good and then it wears off. If you listen to R&B, it is good. If you're unsaved, just exit this part off. If you say, just forget it. I didn't say Christian music. If you listen to R&B and whatever, don't look at me like that because when you got together with your spouse, I did not see any of you say, put me on some William McDowell. I give myself away. You go get that lingerie girl and you give yourself away. No, baby. You were like, go ahead and put on that, that Neo, baby. But well, Okay, back to the sermon. So what he's saying is this. He's simply saying is that you're so broken. And when you're broken, when you're broken, you get satisfied for a moment. That's why you go drink and you get drunk and you get satisfied for a moment. Because there are things that they sell at Home Depot to cover your cracks, but they don't eliminate them. And some of you have mastered the art of getting sealers, but they don't conceal everything. Because if the rain comes in at the wrong direction, it's going to get in the house, and it's going to get behind the walls, and it's going to get into the foundation, and it's going to get into the electrical. And that is why God says there is a need in every human being. And he says, you know, the condition 
here it is. Listen, y'all. The condition, the decisions of the soul often mirror the conditions of the spirit. The decisions of the soul oftentimes mirror the condition of the spirit. And the reason why I said I wanted to challenge us to, to come out on a Saturday morning at 6 a.m. is because some of us are reverting backwards when pressure happens because we're not healed, we're still cracked. And it doesn't mean that when I get saved that, that God's going to erase or eradicate all the cracks. But what he will do is he will make sure that whatever he pours in me he conceals so it don't spill out. So I want to give you a new a profound thought process on, on this whole idea of worship and why it's important that we gather and why it's important that we have community and why we worship God is because this. When you and I extend our hearts to God through our hands, we are in exchange giving God permission to fill and fix. And I know when life gets overwhelming, what do you do sometimes? We just run. Maybe, maybe you should try something different. Maybe when you feel like you're about to go into a rage, maybe you just need to take five minutes and just put some worship on and allow God to fix but it's broken. Now, I love y'all. Y'all are great. And y'all are team grind, team success, team make it. But I really think for some of you, your achievements are just to cover your brokenness. Because you know the first thing people are going to talk to you about is what you accomplished, not who you are. And you've mastered going to the well when no one can see you. So no one knows you. And you just tell them what you want to tell them. How many of your family would be shocked to know that you depressed? You're suicidal. You're lonely. How many spouses would be surprised to say to you, do you feel lonely? And I feel so alone. But I'm here every night. You're here, but I don't even feel you near. There's two parts to that. There, there are parts that may be because, yes, you are not here, and there may be parts that you're so spiritually dry, you're expecting a person to feel what only God can feel. And so I, I want to give us a new revelation on the importance of why we just don't drift into worship anytime. Because when worship is going forth, healing is happening because it is touching a part of me that I don't even know needs to be touched. When the songs of worship are coming forth, they are hitting spots in my life that I did not even know existed before. Here's the beauty of worship. It can only be done by you. Can't nobody give God what you can give him. Can't nobody be a substitute for what God, because God knows I've made you in such a way that only I can touch the areas that you need touch. Can't nobody do you, oh saints, you say can't nobody do me like Jesus. And they used to get super happy about it because it was the truth. And I know we're living in a generation that thinks that you need five steps, six steps, four steps to be great, three steps to do this. But I can tell you that if you really get a hold of God like we should, there's nothing in this world. There's nothing you can attain. There's nothing that you could be around. There's no relationship that you can have that will be 
greater than knowing within yourself that me and him are good. There's no greater feeling in the world than knowing that me and God, we are good. There's no greater moment. When life gets overwhelming, there's no greater ability to be able to go into a place. It's a secret place. It's a place that you and God convene by yourself. And whether you're a male and you sometimes because we're men, it is much more difficult for us to enter into a secret time, a time of quiet, because we don't like stillness, we like movement, we like noise, but there is a dying within our soul that says, soul, I need something. And when we think what we need is one thing, it's really not what we need. You're seeing the engine light turn on, and you're going to get the gas. What we're doing, here's what we're doing. So we're seeing the engine light turn on. And instead of saying, God, fix the engine, we're going to the mechanic and saying, just turn it off. I don't want it fixed. I just don't want to see it. Y'all didn't hear what I said. Say, I, I don't want it fixed. I just don't want to see it. And so it could be broken, but as long as I don't see it, I'm okay with it. As long as that light don't flash, I'm okay with it. And tonight, today, God is simply saying, in every season of our lives, we'll have a light blinking that says, you're spiritually low on worship. And only God Feel it. I, I'm trying. I, I, I'm trying to. I'm trying to do more for God. Listen. You do more from God. You do more for God. Out of your fullness for God. There's a difference. You do more for God. Out of your fullness that you have of God. You cannot do more for God if you have less of God in you. So I want to give you an opportunity. Um, I want to give you an opportunity. I want to give, whether you're male, whether you're female, especially my brothers, this is probably one of the hardest things for us because if, if you lose money, what do you do? <laughs> You get mad, you may punch a wall. That don't fix the crack. Yeah, you, 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 yeah, get mad, get upset. But, but, but there's a space that you, you got to be able to connect to, and, it, and it's, there's no formula to it. And Jesus, the lady says, well, what does what this worship mean? He says, no, 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 they that worship me, they just need to do it in spirit and in truth. They got to do it from the purity of the heart, from the purity of their soul. So in this moment, wherever you are. It, maybe, maybe let me do it this way. If that glass, all of us are cracked to a degree, right? But if you're that glass that keeps leaking out stuff, maybe you need to come here and help us push you in worship. Not put a mic to your face because that's not what we're about. But I simply mean, if you're here and you are like... That's me. Like, I, I, am, I am the woman at the well. I'm, I'm not five husbands, but I'm the engine light person. That light's been blinking. I just, I, just I just tell them, listen, whatever you can do to turn it off, turn it off. I just don't want to see it. I don't want to deal with it. I don't want to mess with it. I'm just going to keep I'm going to keep working, 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 working. And some of you work so that you don't have to hear your thoughts. And I want to pray with you collectively, all of us together. You don't have to stand if you're, if you're seated, that's fine. But I do want us to take the right posture. I want us to take the right posture. And the right posture is his hands extended to God. So I don't know if Jason or Yark um, knows one of y'all can convey with each other if you know it. Um, there's a hole in my heart and only you can fill. So whichever one of you knows it, then it's simply. It draws so near to so. you. 
Would you draw so near to us? Lord, as we pray, would you meet us where we are? Lord, as we pray, would you meet us where we are? Lord, as we pray, would you meet us where we are? Lord, There's a conscience hole in my heart. There's a conscience hole in my heart. There's a conscience hole in my heart. Then only you can feel. Stay right there. Then only you can feel. There's a conscience hole. There's a God There's a God-shaped hole in my heart. Come on, lift it up. There's a There's God, God shape. Can you give them a little more volume, please? There's a God shape. your words here. Come on, say it. Come on, all men only. There's a God shape hole. Come on, brothers. There's a God shape hole. Come on, brothers, tell them only you can feel. Only you can feel. Only you. Only you can feel. 
Come on, women of God, say there's a God-shaped hole. There's a God-shaped hole in my heart. Come on, ladies, say it with your heart. There's a God-shaped Worship is about God filling, God filling the brokenness. But praise, y'all, praise is this. What praise is is this. That even though I may be broken and you filled me up, it's nothing of my own that allows me to hold it, but it's nothing but your grace that allows me to hold it. So every opportunity I get to praise you, I give it to you because I realize I would drop everything had it not been for you on my side, had it not been for you in my life. 